with a reporter doubling down on Braun Strowman's post-WWE booking accommodations and The Rock returning at Survivor Series. This is Wrestling Up, my name is John, and you're watching The Wrestling Report for June 11th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. On a media call for NXT TakeOver In Your House, Triple H was asked about how NXT stars are booked after a main roster call-up and if they are misused. As the game responded, one way of looking at it is misused and another way of looking at it is the things don't always pan out. There are players that play in the NFL, there are players that play in college football, and people can't wait for them to get to the NFL. They get there and it doesn't work, it doesn't pan out. And you can say, well, the team misused them or mismanaged them, or the coach for the team they played for didn't put them in the right role or do whatever, but it could be a million reasons. It could also be that sometimes talent doesn't fit the particular place, or talent made a particular place and then thought, I made it, and that was the end of their growth period. Sometimes it just doesn't work. There's a lot of factors. NXT has grown, one of the things that has changed about it, and look, there is a question there of when you say, so what is NXT? It is just strictly a developmental, where you're looking for everybody there to eventually move on. Or is it its own brand? Is it its own organization? its own grouping. It'll be an interesting place of sort of the criticisms a year or two in, three years in, four years in, that was a heavy knock on NXT. I don't know if you remember it that way, but I do. In doing the interviews at the time, it was always said, how can I get into this brand? Whenever I get excited about a talent, they move on. It kills me for the brand and I don't like it. And it was a heavy duty criticism. That was the first three, four years. And then that morphed into a different place where people got accustomed to that and it switched. The brand changed again. And it changed into a place where, yeah, there are going to be some talent that are going to be in a position for a long time. They might not fit different places. They might not want to go to different places. There are some talent that don't want to leave and expand beyond. They don't want to. Maybe the schedule doesn't work for them physically, whatever it is. So there's a lot of options there. With Survivor Series set to take place at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, WWE is looking to have a big name appear, with Dave Meltzer noting the hope is for Dwayne Johnson to make an appearance at that show, but that isn't locked in. While there was talk of Roman Reigns facing The Rock at WrestleMania, Andrew Zarian confirmed this news writing touching on what was in this week's Wrestling Observer. Dave's report is correct. WWE is hoping to get The Rock for Survivor Series. The plan is to have it in Brooklyn as of right now, but it's very early and things can always change. On NWA Power this week, it was announced there would be an all-women's pay-per-view event in St. Louis August 28th, with Mickey James being the executive producer. Triple H was asked about this on the TakeOver Media call, with him saying, If you want to wrestle the best women in the world, come to WWE. That's where they are. If you want to go elsewhere and say that they are, that's an opinion and you can. I'm all for it. And one of the biggest drivers of it, in my opinion, the best female performers in the world are in WWE, and if they are not, they want to be. AEW and NWA star Thunder Rosa would fire back, writing the best female wrestlers are not located in one company, not even one country. They are spread over many companies and many countries, talented women across the globe. When it comes to what's next for Aleister Black following his WWE release, Meltzer would note, There is a strong belief that Black will be signing with AEW once his 90-day non-compete clause runs out. As Meltzer added, although there has been talk in WWE that the company made a mistake in cutting him and may make him offer to return, so that could change the equation. With Renee Paquette, Black touched on the reactions of those in WWE to the news of his release. I've spoken to a lot of higher-ups and they don't understand it. Throughout the entire company, there is a why him. It's a good feeling that the perception you have of why am I being let go is shared by many high up in the company that are very close to the boss.
Speaking of AEW, Mark Henry spoke about the brand, talking with Renee Paquette. We have to work on the social media aspect of what's going out and what's being portrayed that you want to be an example of what people see. AEW is more brash and has more of an adult feel, but you have to counterbalance that. You have to do stuff in the community and with live events where you give back to the city and be an example instead of a problem. Wrestling wise, I want to see less. I want everyone to watch the matches before them because there is a repetition thing. Someone will do a tape and the next match will have two tapes and the next will have three. Stop trying to outdo what you saw before and find something else to do. Repetition is a pet peeve of mine and I feel if you're not watching the product, if you go do something and someone else did the same thing. I love the Bucks doing super kicks. Why are there three matches on the card where someone does a super kick before them? If that was me, I would be upset about it. According to Dave Meltzer, AEW champion Kenny Omega has been hurting a lot lately, suffering from various injuries. With him riding, Omega is hurting pretty badly between slicing up his hand and needing seven stitches when he delivered the fourth belt shot on Pack in the three-way, the one with the AEW belt, which is especially sharp. A deep bone bruise near his tailbone, the normal wear and tear in his knees, and an athletic hernia. At the fan fest the day before the pay-per-view, he said there are days when he wakes up and walks around where he thinks maybe he's close to the the time to hang it up because his body is feeling worse. Omega was also noted to be dealing with a stomach virus for a period, as he's got an impact title match with Moose tomorrow, with him later facing Jungle Boy on the 26th. Braun Strowman addressed a report claiming his asking price for post-WWE bookings was in the five-figure range. Let me just get this FYI out. I have not spoken to anyone about bookings, but if you want to talk business, the email to my agent is in my bio. Thank for any confusion you may be reading online. Mike Johnson broke that story and has now said PW Insider stands by its reporting from earlier this week. Strowman's manager has quoted 2225k for a three-hour appearance to multiple promoters that have reached out with with their interest in Strowman appearing for them. His manager is also asking for first class airfare, two nights of hotel, plus all meals and ground transportation covered. Meltzer would note obviously a lot of independent promoters have interest in Strowman, but the word on the street is he's looking for $10,000 per appearance, so that will cut down a lot of interest. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.